We have two areas of interest in the Atlantic tropics. Hello everybody, my name is Mike Naso and I'm doing the latest video update for you here on our YouTube channel. Please like, share, subscribe as we get deeper into the heart of hurricane season. We'll see more and more activity, but even for the end of June, we got a lot to talk about today. We have an invest area out here which is an 80% chance of development over the next five days from the National Hurricane Center, interests in the Windward Islands and the north coast of Venezuela and areas of the Caribbean should watch out. We might even see tropical storm watches or warnings as early as tomorrow. Even if the system doesn't form, we want to get watches and warnings out in time. Our second area is only 20% uh, likely for development over the next five days, but this is associated with a troughiness over the southeastern U.S., and if it moves out over water in the Gulf, the waters are warm, the shear is lower, and it's going to be stuck under a ridge moving west-southwest towards Texas and Mexico, and uh, that could develop. So for the end of June, a lot to talk about. Here's the overall Atlantic satellite imagery, and you can see there's our system right here in the uh, central Atlantic. It's not terribly well organized, but it has a lot of moisture with it. And we also have our system here over the northern Gulf Coast, not yet over water, but we're going to watch that very carefully. Now, this is our Invest 94L. You can definitely see some kind of spin in there. It's not very well organized yet, but like I mentioned before, the moisture is with it, and it is starting to get a little bit more of a consolidation, so it's not as sporadic with the convection. So if this keeps blowing up the way the computer models show, we will likely see development. However, it's got a lot of obstacles to overcome. First of all, it's so far south. Look at this map here. This is South America. This is Brazil down here. So this thing is very far south. I mean, it is down there, tropical, waterfall, cliff South America. I mean, this is very far south. So it needs to gain some latitude before it could even get into the windwards. But if it does, and we expect it to be able to, we could see development. Now here's the computer models. This is the Canadian model. And you can see it brings our system up here very close to South America, becomes a hurricane, slams into northern Nicaragua. That's the Canadian model. That was the 12Z. This is the GFS model. Look at this hurricane it brings into northern Nicaragua on July 3rd. And again... That would be a potent hurricane. I mean, that's nothing to mess around with. And that is, uh, again, the same track right into northern Nicaragua. Then we look at the European model. Look at it. Right into northern Nicaragua as what looks like a hurricane. Now, there's another wave behind it that we're watching. Some of the computer models are showing the moisture from that wave moving on up towards the Bahamas and Florida, but not before impacting the greater Antilles. So we're going to watch that one as well. Here are the ensembles with that. The GFS, you can see, takes that wave more north, and it takes our system here along the coastline of Venezuela, South America, Colombia, before slamming into Nicaragua. The uh, European, same thing, very well clustered up until the end here. Some of them want to take it more towards Belize and the Yucatan, and uh, we also have some of them spinning up that little system there near Texas. And by the way, if we do get a system in the Gulf here, this could break down the high pressure and allow our other system to gain a little more latitude. But my thinking is this is going to stay pretty far south. You can see these are the spaghetti model plots. And again, very, very close to South America before hitting areas there of Central America. It'll have a better window between 75 west and 85 west in this little box right here. Very warm waters. Probably a lot of moisture, a lot of uh, tropical air, as well as a good upper-level environment, especially if it has high pressure steering it off to the north. However, if there's too fast of motion, it could actually get easterly shear. Remember Hurricane Nana that went into Belize back in 2020? Minimal hurricane? Forgettable hurricane. Still a hurricane, though. That thing never got above Category 1 because it was racing underneath a dominant ridge of high pressure. So we would likely see a similar track to that. As a matter of fact, a hurricane that came to mind that is a real forgotten hurricane was Hurricane Caesar. Now, this is the track of Caesar. Now, Caesar was in July of 96. So for those of you who were alive, go way back to July of 96. This is 26 years ago. It developed in July, and it was uh, right near the ABC Islands. In fact, it went over Curacao, 
and it was a tropical storm near Venezuela, Colombia, and then it moved out over those hot waters, and it became a potent Category 1 hurricane before landfall in Nicaragua. And you can see the satellite there of Hurricane Caesar. It was definitely well-organized. I mean, yeah, it didn't have a well-defined eye, but come on, look at that outflow there, a lot of moisture. It has that uh, real tropical look, and it was bubbling right there as it made landfall in Nicaragua, and it killed hundreds of people from flooding and mudslides. And after 96, they retired the name Caesar, and they replaced it with Cristobal, which we used again in 2002, 2008, 2014, and then 2020. And that name Cristobal is still on the list. But originally, on the original list, it was Caesar. So Caesar is a deadly but forgotten hurricane, but I think that track might be kind of... Uh, a good analog, a July hurricane, Category 1, close to South America, hits Nicaragua. So we might be seeing another Hurricane Caesar, so we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. Now here's the uh, latest satellite imagery, the radar imagery rather, of the areas there of the Gulf Coast. You can see the troughiness. We have had some severe weather down in areas of Louisiana, Baton Rouge, probably a wet night there, as well as areas up there near Jackson. Nevertheless, all of this weather should be moving towards the south eventually underneath high pressure. So what we're basically going to have is a ridge of high pressure that's going to push this system, this troughiness, out over the hot waters here of the Gulf, generally west-southwest. So if it made quote-unquote landfall as a tropical cyclone, if it ever became one, I would be thinking Brownsville, Padre Island, Matamoros, this area here. It's not so much that it would become anything intense, but again, it could play a role in breaking down the ridging a little for when our system's coming up through the Caribbean. So we were seeing yesterday some indications of that, but maybe not as much today. We're going to keep an eye on it. You can see the wind shear in the Gulf of Mexico is pretty favorable, all things considered. And look at how much it's died down in the Caribbean. Remember a few days ago I showed you that wind shear on the map. It was just shredding, and it's still there, but much lower here than it was. And this system has a beautiful little anti-cyclone aloft. That's anti-cyclone, so in our hemisphere, cyclones move counterclockwise. Anti-cyclone is the opposite way. So when you get in the upper levels, that clockwise flow around the system, that vents it while the counterclockwise spins at the low levels, and that's uh, good for development. So this system's got a little safe harbor over it, as it moves into the Caribbean. Again, it's still early, though, so we're going to watch it. Could become a tropical storm. Could be our first hurricane, but right now it is still just an area to watch. Celia, we're still dealing with it out here. 50 miles an hour is moving out to sea. It's supposed to dissipate and not become a hurricane. However, look at it. It try is trying. It's got that eye-type feature there. It's really trying to become a hurricane. As a matter of fact... Look at that visible satellite imagery trying to spin up an eye. That's what we call an eye-type feature. So it's like an eye, but it's not quite an eye. And the problem for Celia is this convection is so weak that the National Hurricane Center doesn't think that even though it's wrapping up an eye, it doesn't have that energy to get winds to hurricane force. So don't be surprised if it somehow gets there, but it looks like it's going to just sputter as a moderate tropical storm and then eventually die and we won't have to deal with it anymore. So we're going to keep an eye on the tropics here. You can see our system, our invest area. We could see watches and warnings for areas of the Windward Islands, and if you're in uh, areas of northern South America, watch it. It's going to be a rainy, wet week, and uh, we'll see what happens further down the line. We'll keep an eye on it. I'm Mike Naso with the latest on the tropics. Please stay tuned, like, subscribe, share, and I'll talk to you guys next time.